It's a beautiful brand new day here at City Star TV. Another enjoyable and informative episode of Papa Tanya is coming your way. As always, I'm your host, Nanaya, and as I always keep reminding you, please, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Don't miss us on any of our other exciting and educative programs and episodes. If you haven't followed us on our social media handles, it's Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. The name is City Star TV. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As I informed you earlier, another episode, another enjoyable and informative episode of Abatanya is coming your way today. Your host, Nonaya, I'm about to share with you my post-Caesarean C-section experience with you. Pastly, uh, in the past of experience, I've shared my experience about my labor, my pregnancy and my labor journey with you. And today I'm about to share with you what happened as I had my baby. Yes, indeed, I'm reminding you that I'm a mother of a beautiful six-year-old baby girl. And this is what happened after I had my baby. So on Monday, 11th April 2016, I had my cesarean section, that is a C-section, at La General Hospital where I had my baby girl. And mind you, per my previous episode, I told you the stress I went in during my labor. We started from the Thursday to the Monday where I had to go for a C-section. I had been through so much that, and I'd been through, I'd received so much medication that practically half of my face was swollen. I mean, like this side, the whole right side was swollen, very, very big, while the other side remained normal. And I'd, I returned from my the theater i was taken to the recovery ward where i wasn't made to eat anything solid i think in the last 48 hours the only thing i was given was a cup of leptin tea with no sugar or milk that was the only thing i had i hadn't even had a water to drink or anything of the sort and i had lost so much fluids weight and blood that i was taking a whole lot of uh, drips and I had to take, I think, about three units of blood. So during this time, I was still going through that. And the insertion needed to be checked. So I was informed it should be done every other day. And I also was breastfeeding. I had just had a newborn baby and I needed to breastfeed. But my body had been through so much that I wasn't producing those breast milk. It wasn't coming. So I informed my physician and he advised that I made my, my baby suck on it anyway to see if the production will start. So that was basically what I was doing, hopefully, and hoping that I could start breastfeeding my baby or at least start producing breast milk. So let's go to my caesarean section because that's where the complications set in. So I was informed, I had my CS on Monday and I was informed that every other day, that means um, not the next day, but the next two days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, and following suit, my insertion will be checked and to check that it's healing properly and there are no complications. So the very first day, Monday, everything was okay. On the Wednesday, I went, they checked. It was okay. The, there wasn't any problem. And I came back. Uh, I had a little difficulty walking. So I was basically leaning on my tummy most of the time, you know, hunchback and all that. And I think on the second day, I was told I could drink porridge because um, I still wasn't being able to produce breast milk for my baby. So the physician advised that I could actually take some porridge. And I informed my mom, who was with me throughout the whole thing. So she brought me white porridge made from Kondo. And that's what I was taking. And it was time for me to go and check my insertion. So I wasn't really in any kind of pain because I was on so many pain medications. I was taking some orally. I was receiving some through drips or infusions and even suppositories. So I was on so much pain meds, I could barely feel a thing. Except some little pressure in my abdomen and I couldn't really stand up and walk well. So on that Wednesday, I took some porridge and then I went to get my incision checked. So when I went to the treatment room, um, when the nurse who was working on me checked it, she had this look on her face and I was alarmed. But when I asked her if there was any issue, she said, no, everything is fine. It was, there was just some fluid uh, secretion, but it, it's okay. So I tried to, I, I actually did. I informed her that I have a reaction. I don't know why, 
but I have an allergic reaction to the usual plaster that we use. You see the common ones that are on the market, the brown or cream colored one. The usual one that you know when you walk into a pharmacy or hospital and you're wounded, the normal plaster they use. I react with it. I don't know why, but I do. She said, oh, I wasn't reacting to it, so it's fine. I said, okay. Then I went back. So after Thursday, they needed the beds because there were lots of other pregnant women coming in. So basically, that's what they said. They came in, they told us, eat some heavy food and get the hell out of here. So that's what we did. On Thursday, I had some heavy food, um, rice, I think, and contemporary. And at that time, I, was, I started lactating a little bit. The breast milk production was going on, and my daughter was getting something because of the porridge I had earlier in some soup and all that. So things were on the up and up. So on Friday morning, I went to get my incision checked again, and then I was discharged that I could go home. I lived all the way at Abeka, which was very far, yeah, very far from Lajeno Hospital. So I had to go have my incision checked the next two days. That'll be a Sunday. So when I go home that Friday, it didn't feel right. I, was, I started feeling some discomfort more than I usually do. So I went inside to my room. I laid on my bed and then I saw my mom. So she came to check on my insertion and she told me that it was drooling a bit. There were like some fluid excretion coming out of it a bit. So we should, I should check on it. If it, it doesn't resolve itself, the next day we should go to the hospital. So the next day we went to Kaneshi Polyclinic, which was the closest hospital to me, where I had actually paired my previous story. I said I started my antenatal once I moved to Abeka. So we went there, we went to the treatment room and they checked it. And that's when I got a very alarming news. Apparently all the stitches that held my incision together had come loose. Basically, I had a gaping hole in my abdomen. And the nurse there informed me that the best course of treatment was for me to go back to where I had my surgery and let my surgeon restitch it up. So that's what we decided to do. We went back to La General Hospital where I went to look for my surgeon. <laughs> so when I got to the hospital and I went to the labor ward, because that's where I met my surgeon, I went to where you, you make your inquiries and all that. And I met a nurse and I requested that if I could see Dr. Asuzo and so I will not mention his name, because he was the surgeon that operated on me and I was told to come see him because all my stitches had come loose and I basically had a gaping home in my abdomen. And she told me why I needed to see him specifically. And I asked that I was advised to come see, I mentioned that I was advised to come see my surgeon, the one who actually operated on me. She told me to have a seat. I did. I waited an hour, two, three. At the fourth hour, I told my mom, I don't think this surgeon is coming because I'd seen him around. He hadn't even given me so much as a second glance, almost like he didn't know I was there to see him. So I walked to the nurse station again and I inquired. And that's when I was informed that he hasn't even been informed there's somebody waiting for him. Apparently, there was some drama going on between some of them. But I don't know how that could actually affect their professional work. But I did. And I suffered the consequences of that. Because with that, he didn't get the information that I was there to see him. And he left the premises. So I had to go to the treatment room. Again, the, the nurse advised that I go to the treatment room and they can take a look at it. Maybe they can help me with the restitching. So when I went there, they told me they can't restitch it, but they will treat it as a wound until it heals. So that's the treatment plan we went with. I got some gauze, dress, and you know, all these things used to treat a gaping wound. And they started the treatment. So I informed the nurse at the treatment room that I'm allergic, I react to the brown plaster, and I think that is what caused it. Her response to me is that I am being too no, because nobody, she's been a nurse for several years, and she's yet to meet anybody that reacts to plaster. I said, okay. So she wouldn't listen to me. I didn't know anything else. She's like, they say, then they have to react to it. I was so reacted to it. What will reacted to plaster that? They went ahead and put the same thing there. I continued my treatment. The next Monday I went, Wednesday, Friday. Gradually, gradually, it'd been almost two weeks. And now the inf it was getting infected. 
after a week and I went, they realized that the insertion, where it's supposed to be, is actually, how do I put this? The wound is spreading. A crony did What is supposed to be a very thin insertion is now, it's like it's climbing up to my abdomen and the whole place is getting sore. So that's when they called another uh, nurse, uh, an older, I think a more experienced, to come and check that instead of my wound to be healing, it's getting worse and it's really beginning to ooze a lot of fluids. So then what they asked me, when I told them again, that I've had this experience before, so much as a needle or a pin should prick my hand and I should put that kind of plaster on it, it should turn into a very big wound. I don't know how, but somehow my skin reacts to that thing so much that edidim, ema so it's probably that. So they should change the plaster for me. They informed me that that is not it, that I'm putting so much stress on myself. I don't watch the way I get down from my bed. I don't watch the way I sit. I move around a lot. And that is what is causing the wound to be infected. So I should be on bed rest. Mind you, my kid is about two weeks old now. I should be on bed rest. So that's when I went home. Basically, per their instruction, I shouldn't get up from the bed without assistance. When I want to get up from the bed, I should roll to my side before I even put one leg down and put the other down and then get up. That was what I was told. They still wouldn't listen to me and they told me to go on with this treatment plan and that everything will be okay. Now, what happened afterwards was really bad. I had one of my worst experiences ever and I'm about to share that with you shortly after this break. So welcome back. As I was sharing with you, I'm about to have one of my worst experiences because I got home and I had to go with the treatment. Being in bed, don't move around, sleep. When they're getting down, roll to your side, one foot down before the other foot joins before you get up. Okay, I'm going to listen to you since you won't listen to me. So I come home and one of these occasions I'm in bed. Remember, I'm a lactating mother. I'm breastfeeding my newborn who's about two weeks old and I'm in bed per my nurse's instructions I'm not supposed to get up or move around I'm not supposed to let any fluids get close to the wound so I'm not bathing I'm using towel to dry myself up most of the time so clean myself up sorry so that's what I'm doing so one day I'm in bed my daughter is in her cots just at the foot of my bed and I'm lying in bed and my mom is in the hall, I'm in the bedroom, she's in the hall. We had a guest, so they were watching television. So my bedroom door was closed, so the noise doesn't come in and wake the baby because she was sleeping. And I was actually in bed with my TV on and I was watching a program, but it wasn't really loud. So then my baby starts crying. And at this time, because of the way the wound was infected, it was beginning to hurt. So it's actually painful for me to sit on my own and walk around on my own. I really needed help to even get out of the bed. So my baby is crying and I can't get up and go and pick my baby. And I'm calling out to my mom and the TV is a little loud in the hall so she can hear me. And I can also, uh, my voice is a little groggy so I can't really shout for her to hear me. And I keep calling out to my mom. And she can't hear, so she's not coming. And my baby keeps crying, and I can't get out of bed, and I can't go and pick her up. And it's so sad that I also start crying. So now my baby is crying in her cot. I'm on my bed, and I'm crying. And I think it was during this time that they went on a commercial break, or the, the TV volume must have gone down, because my mom heard the crying coming from my bedroom. So she rushes in, and she's like, what is it? And I don't know. I just keep crying. My baby is crying. She just looks at the both of us, and then she also starts crying. Because... I can't get out of bed to pick up my newborn baby and breastfeed my baby because of how much pain I was in from my complication for my CS. And it was so sad. That was the last time I had my baby sleep in a cot. I told my mom, until I'm able to get out of this bed, my baby is joining me here because I need to be able to reach her whenever she needs me to. So we, we put the cot aside and I started putting my baby on the bed next to me. Another week passed and we went back. We kept going. They kept telling me to be less, 
mo less movements i shouldn't be moving around or i should keep following i said okay that's basically what i'm doing look at my back i'm, I'm beginning to even get sores on my back because i'm not moving i'm basically lying in bed so when i went there then after the third week and then i met another nurse and she saved my life because it was getting really bad she looked at it and she was like how come the treatments are not working and i told them will you please please pay attention to what i've been saying i think apparently i've been saying it so much that they they've informed each other that there's this one patient coming here claiming she's allergic to plaster so when she comes she's complaining don't mind her but that very particular nurse she minded she actually paid attention i told her i showed her a scar on my leg and i told her this scar was a tree branch it just a tree branch pricked me just a little bit and we put plaster on it and that's how come i have this very very big scar on my leg and i have other scars on my body it took about the second or third treatment for me to realize that my body actually reacts to this plaster this way so please listen to me and give me some another course of treatment there was another nurse there and she her response was it's the same it's a yenfa plaster and tari so i have had an entire somehow that's when the, the senior nurse came in and she recommended micropore plastic apparently it's also similar to this plaster but it's it's not the same it's not made of the same material it's way lighter so there's uh, the chance of air aeration and all that is it's actually better so then she recommended micropore plastic that if i'm reacting to the plaster fine they're actually going to listen to me and change it for me so she had me get micropore plastic it's not easy to get i think at that time I roamed a lot of pharmacies around the area. I got lucky at Art Pharma at Moving Pick. That was when I was able to get some. They changed my course of treatment from dress and other harsh medications to, um, I think, Timson Solution and all these things. I don't get technical. So they changed it for me to micropore plastic. And then that was when my next course of treatment started. And that's when things started getting better. Because once they changed it to the micropore plastic, uh, I came home over the course of the next two, three weeks, things started looking up better, the fluid started reducing. So the C-section that was supposed to take two to three weeks to heal, it took 10 weeks, two months, two weeks, 10 whole weeks. For me, most I had seven weeks in bed that I wasn't moving around. The pain, it wasn't supposed to hurt because I was on so many pain medications. But it's, the pain became unbearable. I couldn't bath. I couldn't set up by myself. I had to roll over a whole lot. I went through a lot. A lot indeed. I went through a lot. And it wasn't easy. I was breastfeeding my baby. I was barely eating. I was having problem lactating. So after a while, we had to introduce my baby to um, formula. Yes, that's what we call it, formula. Because... The breast milk production they come from that and back because of the what my body was going through it wasn't easy i'm about to share my recovery journey with you what happened on my road to recovery that i got better so stay tuned and i'll be right back so welcome back i'm about to share my road to recovery and it wasn't easy. I mean, it's been so stressful. It's taking such a toll on me, on my quality of life. Imagine this. If you're somebody who lives in a car, you know. And at this time, it's not like I can be, my, my movement, on an average of three times a week, I'm moving from Abeka to La General. Every single time. You go there, you wait in line, so it gets to your turn, you go to your treatment room and you go through this. You're buying medication, different sorts. It, it, I had problem lactating because my body was going through so much. I wasn't able to eat a whole lot of things. My movement was restricted. I had body pains a whole lot. It was a very, very stressful time for me. It wasn't easy. Up until I started seeing some changes when I changed from the regular plaster to the micropore plastic, that the fluid excretion stopped. There was some improvements. The wounds started healing. And every time they were stuffing me with gauze they opened i mean there was one time i went to the treatment room and the nurse had me lie down she opened my abdomen she held the mirror above me and made me look and it scared 
the hell out of me because I could I could basically see what was going on down there and it wasn't pretty. And I went through all this and luckily I started using the microfiber plastic and things started resolving itself, the fluid stopped, the wound started closing up. It got to a time they weren't stuffing me with gauze anymore because the wound was closing up. And they used this very, I don't know, it, it looked like a blue stone of some sort. They rub it on it and use the Timson solution and all these things and the microfiber plastic and eventually my wound started healing and that was when i started regaining my strength and i i was able to pick up my baby move around i think it was after the eighth week that i was actually able to take a bath and it wasn't easy i mean i was taking a bath and i had i had plastic wrapped around my abdomen so the water doesn't you know go into the insertion because I'd suffered to get to that stage where I was almost done and I wasn't going to get it infected and go through the whole thing again. So my f the first time I had a bath was eight weeks after I had my baby and it was, I don't know how to even explain it. I had to introduce my baby to fluids and, and formula at a very early stage, even though I'd hoped I could do some, you know, exclusive breastfeeding for a while, I couldn't because of what I was going through. And thankfully we went through all that and 10 weeks later, the wound was perfectly healed. My life was back on track. My baby was okay. I was okay. And I could go on with my life. I had also, in this, during this time, I'd resumed school actually. So I had actually had to start lectures, but I wasn't able to. But later on, everything was okay. And I was actually able to return to school, return to work, and then be a mother. So I was a working and schooling mom. And it wasn't easy going through all this. It was one hell of a recovery journey. And thanks to God, I went through it. Thank you all for always staying with us. I hope, as I keep reminding you, you have subscribed at this time. If you haven't, please do so. Follow us on all our social media handles on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. The name is City Star TV. I am your host, Nanaya. I always bring this to you. Please watch out for our next episodes. This and every Wednesday and Friday here on City Star TV. Please subscribe. Thank you.